Everybody's going to testify. Please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help you God. Okay, thank you. Um, y'all, I just crammed y'all in today since uh, we did not go last week. So we only have 30 minutes uh, in between other trials and a full docket I have this afternoon. I've uh, read the reports. Uh, I don't, we don't need to get into a lot of testimony back and forth. I just kind of would prefer for the attorneys to proffer what y'all want. Uh, if y'all want any additional changes to the previous uh, the prior existing order. So let's just do it in that order. Uh, Ms. And it looks like baby Dennis is doing well. Um, sounds like he's getting, um, he doesn't go to speech therapy anymore. Um, sounds like he's progressing through some of the um, services that um, the lady, I can't remember her name, that she testified to pretty in depth previously. So sounds like he's progressing and just doing little guy stuff little big guy stuff. So, uh, okay. Mr. Rogers, what do y'all need today? Uh, well, your honor, I think for the most part, uh, we were just going to talk primarily about visitation. I believe that, uh, at present the department might be willing to allow a little bit of additional visitation, uh, for the Dyers and the Moors, uh, based on agreement of department and ad litems. Um, I would like to probably to request that the court uh, require baby dentist to remain in Lano and Walker counties as per the current orders, except for transport. Um, and I also like to ask Mr. Tobar very briefly: Is there anything else the department would require in particular today? We did read the reports, but uh, um, no, sir, Mr. Rogers. There's nothing else further. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so that that's basically our position, Judge. I think if uh, additional uh, visitation is appropriate as we go through this extension, and we'd like it to be at the agreement of CPS and ad items. Okay, when you're talking additional, you're talking like longer weekends? Longer weekends primarily, I believe. Yes. Okay, holiday, and we have some holiday. Uh, I'll need to, see what our next hearing is after this. Oh, we could deal with Thanksgiving uh, at the 11-8 hearing too, so, okay. Um, One more comment okay. though, Your Honor, you had mentioned, and I and I think this gets a good thought that that we don't want to have all the weekends sucked up so the foster never get any weekend time either. So, but but having said that, I think more visitation, longer weekends is appropriate. Miss McClure will get to you in a minute. I got to hear from everybody else first. <laughs> You're the that that issue, that's all. Uh, okay, Mr. Conley, what do y'all need? Judging. Um, well, just a brief update. I, I spoke with Mr. Tovar, who I think also we were on an email chain with Mr. Rogers uh, earlier in the week. And I'm sorry, I'm in the Travis County Courthouse. I just broke from another protective order hearing. Uh, but we are working with the department to try to start some services uh, that we've discussed. And we've got a release uh, that my office is trying to hone a little bit so that I think we can come to an agreement with regards to some drug testing and some other stuff. And so that's in the process. We're working on that. And then, you know, technically from our side, you know, we've got the protective order in place. Uh, I think it goes without saying that, you know, uh, Mr. Price's perspective is that he would like to maximize as much time as possible with uh, the Moors, uh, with the right. child. Um, but that, that's kind of where we are at the moment. Yeah, I was wondering, I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but since you brought it up, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, I was wondering uh, why Mr. Price hadn't been doing any services to the department. I mean, I got part of it because the criminal stuff, I got all that. Yeah. But I, about the drug testing, because I don't, I mean, I always just got to be honest with y'all. I always wonder when you're drug testing for anything through probation. You know, I usually know when I'm going to, if, if I was on probation, when I'm going to go see my probation officer. You know, I don't know how the, the the testing on the bond deal, is it really random? You know, I, I don't know. Yeah, he, he's got pretty rigorous testing procedures through the bond, the the two bonds that he's got. And so there's a scram device, there's, there's all sorts of things that he's doing. But uh, my goal is to make sure that the department is aware of that, that they understand what he's doing as well. Uh, you know, he he would be, his bond would be revoked at a moment's notice if, if there was any indication you know, he was in violation. And of course, that's the last thing that he wants. And so 
Um, that's what we're trying to do. You know, I, I am also under constraints from his criminal counsel uh, who are very keen on making sure that he doesn't do anything to affect his uh, rights under the Fifth Amendment, of course. And so signing various releases that would necessarily require him to talk about facts that are the predicate of the criminal case, that that is what is the concern. Um, but we're trying to do as much as possible and work with Mr. Rogers, Mr. Tovar to try to to start exactly what he can while still maintaining those constitutional rights. Um, who's his criminal lawyer? Is it the Shells or did he have, did he have somebody else? No, he has a law firm out of Austin, not my law firm. Um, Dunham and Jones, uh, not Dunham. Uh, I'm sorry. I know a uh, lead attorney on it is named Jessica, Jessica Hugh. Um, the name okay. of the firm is escaping me for the moment. I'm sorry. It's been a long time. That's okay. I, I don't know that individual. So that was, I was just wondering. Um, and I believe, you know, I was always <clears throat> kind of catching in on the end of y'all's um agreement about continuing the trial but what when is he set for trial in the criminal case so i don't want to misspeak about what may have happened over the past week but he was set for november and then what i understand based on the criminal dockets up there is that he would uh, there there might be a request for a continuance based on some discovery issues that uh, his criminal defense attorneys are raising, but if a continuance is granted, it would get reset to early, I believe January. Um, uh, he tried the criminal case. That's so, my understanding exactly as well, Your Honor. Okay, so before our dismissal date, right? Correct. Okay. Well, and you know, that brings up something I think I put in the email, but y'all, we might want to talk about it now. And just tell me what y'all think. Uh, I'm not right now, but when we get done with everybody going through what they want to proffer today, we might want to look at our calendars and just save some dates for trial now because I know everybody gets crazy. And um, anyway, what do y'all think about that? Yeah, I'm getting head shakes. Okay. Okay. I have to figure out where my 24 calendar is, but we'll figure it out. Okay, well, we'll talk about the breakout room and deal with that. Okay, uh, anything else, Mr. Connell? Judge, I believe that's it from our end. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jeffries, we haven't, I haven't met you before, or I don't believe I've seen you in court. Uh, I think you came in to our deal towards uh, recently. What, what do y'all need today? Uh, I don't know that we need anything today, Your Honor. Just the, uh, the, uh, orders that are in place and the guidance that's already been provided, we are satisfied with for the time being. Okay. Um, same questions I asked Mr. Conley. Uh, what, who is Ms. Price's criminal lawyer and what's the status of, or uh, when's the setting or if any on her criminal charge? Uh, yes, ma'am. I am the, I'm the criminal defense attorney for, uh, we're set for trial in November. We'll, we'll see I don't know where we are on that docket as far as what number case we are, uh, who has priority over us, but uh, we'll, we'll be ready in November if the court's ready to try us at that time. Do y'all have the same prosecutor as Mr. Price does? I am not sure about that. Okay. And I don't, you know, I don't know what goes on at the DA's office, even though we office in the same town. I, I don't right. have a clue. And I, I don't even know who, who's over there now. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Mr. Davis, what do y'all need besides what Mr. Rogers said? So, no, everything that, that everybody else has said sounds great. I mean, we'd love to get a trial date. The extra visit time would be would be great. The only thing I would ask for just a little bit of clarification on and or slight tweak is that Miss Moore's daughter is uh she plays volleyball and She's in, they play, they go to school in Grimes County, which touches Walker County. And on two of the visits that they'll have baby Dennis on, that, that's going to be one of the Saturdays that her daughter's playing volleyball. She would like to be able to go to the volleyball game with baby Dennis if that's allowable. If it's not, we understand. That's fine. I understand. Thanks, yeah, no, I, I got it. And, um, you know, 
I, I was raised in Harris County, but I have since forgotten about a lot of that stuff. So I don't remember the geography over there so swell. Is Grimes contiguous to Walker County? Contiguous to Walker, heading west, Judge, getting closer to College Station area. Okay. Okay. What's the county seat of Grimes? That might help me better. That is, oh, you just, um, it's um, Anderson. Henderson or Anderson? Anderson. Okay. Yes, sir. That didn't, help, that didn't help me much. Okay, but that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's No, that's okay. I don't think I've ever been there. Okay, thank I you. I mean, Navasota is the one area that's the most popular, I guess, in Grimes County. So Navasota oh. is just a little bit south of College Station in West. Okay. okay. Well, obviously, I've, I've heard of that. So, okay. Um, obviously, I'm not an Aggie, or I would know more about that territory. So uh, that's not my thing. Okay. Ms. Lang, what do y'all need? Thank you, Judge. You know, Judge, I just need clarification, and it may be my oversight, Mr. Davis. I thought Ms. Moore homeschooled her children, so I just need, can we, do, they're all in public school? They all go to school out in Grimes County. Okay, has that What's been the, through the, I'm sorry. Say that, say that, that's been the way, that, that's been the whole time. Well, wow, okay. Misinterpretation, mishearing on my part. I apologize. Judge, the only other question or request I would have is as we implement drug testing for Mr. Price, I know he has a lot of gadgets on him and a lot of testing happening, but if the department's going to be doing um, their UAs, if we could add ETG to that occasionally, do some random ETG checks that way, um, I think that would be prudent. Okay. Okay. Um you brought up something. Let me go back and ask Mr. Davis. I, and like I said, I don't know about the geography over there. Why do they go to school in Grant, Grimes County if they live in Walker County? Is the school district overlap? Well, and so I guess it's one they can, and maybe Ms. Moore could speak to that, but it's one they can elect to go into. It's just a, it's a, it's a school district that they prefer. And it's just, it's very close by to, um, so they're in Huntsville. So the way it touches, it's a, it's a little bit of a drive, but not, not terrible. And what? they just like the school system out there better. What's the ISD? Ms. Moore? Is it smaller? It's very small. And my um, my sister's children go there. So we prefer that they all go. They have fun together. And it's a smaller school. Huntsville's pretty large. So we don't like it quite as much. Uh, I'm between Lano and Marble Falls. And we go to Lano. I probably the same DR we did. Why? Yes. Uh, how far is your kid's school from your house? It's about probably 30 miles. Okay. Where would the closest Huntsville school, ISD school be? Well, it's very close, about four miles. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. And how old is your daughter, Miss Moore, that plays uh, basketball, volleyball? And what kind of school is it like uh little dribblers but for volleyball would I mean because she doesn't play it for school does she oh okay okay what about any of your other kids do they have any <clears throat> any similar type of extracurriculars yes um my middle child Jess is going to he's always plays basketball he will be playing for the school uh for the junior high so his games would be during the week um if oh. our if our visitations were longer and were during the week time, then, you know, I would prefer to go to his games also, but they are way farther away. Cause you know, on small schools, they find way. So I wouldn't ask to go that far. I can go to his um, home games only when he's going that far. Okay. I understand. Uh, remember I'm from Lano. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, okay. That that's fine. Okay, uh, let's see. Ms. Parker, your pro se, what, anything you would request today? Muted, so, ma'am. Uh, hang on a second. No, I hear you. We can hear you now. Uh, I was wondering why my husband and I don't have visitation. We we're having visitation before, and uh, it's it's a long drive over to my daughter's house, and we have to work in between his naps and his next nap, and uh, we only have like an hour or two at the most to visit with him during those weekends. So, uh, also, hold on, uh, you live in Cottonwood, correct? Yes. 
And Miss Dyer lives in Kingsland. Oh no, she lives way out on the back side of Buchanan. It's an hour drive. Where at Buchanan? Uh, few miles from Lano at the most. Does she live in one of those subdivisions down the west side of Lake Buchanan? It's a big ranch, and the driveway is like three miles just to get down to where they live. Okay. Your Honor, I think the last order you had said that she could visit any time that Jamie had the baby, and that's, okay. that's what we've been doing. That's what y'all been doing? Yes, that we've let it be up to them um, how they want to work that out. So it's not that she's not been given visitation. It's just well, that. Uh, Ms. Ms. Parker, let Ms. McClure finish. Go on, Ms. McClure. Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, but it, basically it was that any visitation that she and her husband had could be conducted, would be conducted during the time that Jamie and James had the baby. Okay. I remember that. Okay. Okay. I got that, Ms. Parker. What's your next issue? Uh, also, the aunts uh, who were said to be the most desirable people to get the baby uh, don't have any visitation at all. They live in San Antonio which is quite a drive for them. Uh, I know that Linda works on weekends at the airport. Uh, Kathy does not work, so uh, I don't know. It's, it's, they have no visitation at all unless they plan a weekend drive here to see them for an hour or so in between naps. Ms. McClure, did I include them in any of the uh, visits? No, um, they were not interveners. Um, they were never, uh, they never pled to intervene. They were never allowed to intervene. Um, and they were never included in any of the visitation scheduling. Okay. I'm sorry, but they were. They made at least two trips. Uh, they were really never notified when their visitation times were. I know that was a big problem to them. Well, what I, I know refer to was I no remember testimony that they were visiting at the CPS office. I remember that. Yeah. And, you know, part of it, if you're not an intervener, you know, you're you're not entitled to the same notice that everybody else in this case is. Everybody else hired lawyers or filed an intervention pro se like you did, Ms. Parker. So they are not, I mean, that's their, that's their responsibility. What else, Ms. Parker? Well, uh, as far as all these games go that are a public place, what's to keep the people that are disallowed from visitation being there with the rest of the family and seeing the baby having uh, exposure. Previous orders would remain in effect. And I don't think Miss Moore, I mean, in a public place, I think she'd be really dumb if she were to, to violate any of those. And Mr. Dennis has a protective order against him. He violates that. He's going to jail. And nowadays, as much as people record their children's basketball games, I mean, it, 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 and, you know, the schools might record them for liability purposes. I mean, it might be pretty darn easy to be able to get a hold of a video or something. Uh, so I, I, I'm not worried about that. Anything else, Ms. Parker? Uh, no, I'm just disappointed over the, over the visitation. You know, we went through two home studies. and. Well, Ms. Parker, of Parker, I haven't ruled yet. I'm just trying to get what y'all what y'all want. So just wait a minute before you have any complaints. Miss McDougal, what does Casa need? Casa didn't need anything. Okay. Yay. Good. Uh, y'all get a gold star today. Yay. Okay, Miss McClure, what do y'all what do you need? Well, um, we're working on setting up a meeting, uh, hopefully Monday or Tuesday of next week with uh, CASA, CPS, and myself. Uh, you know, we, we, we wanted to get ahead of September with the trial, so we went ahead and did all the visits for September, and those have all been taken care of. We're going to be discussing visits from this point forward. Uh, we're going to be, um, I think we're going to start off for the first month or two, expanding it either by including Fridays in the visit, so pickups on Thursday and return is on Monday, or start the visit on Friday, but have it end um, Tuesday morning. So we're going to, we're going to do some talking about that. We're going to be looking at weekends. You know, if one person gets a holiday, then somebody else needs to get another holiday. So we're going to try to be balancing all of that 
um, between us all. But one thing that we have not run into yet, but we might run into it, I'm trying to get ahead of it, is the daycare, I know they've got rules and I don't have enough brain cells to keep up with them. But if for some reason we end up not meeting the number of days that CPS needs in order to pay for daycare because of the expanded visitation, I'd like an order that he's going to stay in that daycare no matter what. And even if he misses too many days because of the visitations, that that's not going to be um, anything that causes any any problems. Okay, remind me, and my file is about that big, and I don't want to go back to all my emails. Ms. McClure, remind me, uh, are the Dyers the first weekend and the Moors the third weekend? Generally, yes. There have been a few changes, but generally that's what we shoot for. Okay, okay. And y'all change by agreement or somebody's got a plan or something like that, right? Or I Everybody's worked very well together. I mean, the foster family's plans were going to trump everybody, so... Okay, what did I say about um, uh, Dyers and Moors visiting other times other than on their respective weekends? There was a time period before Mr. Price agreed to the protective order when we didn't know if he was going to do that or not. And during that brief time period, um, unless and until he agreed to that, Abigail didn't have her visitation in Huntsville. And so we did have an extra visit at the CPS office for each side. But once that got put to bed, then we just stopped that because it made it contingent upon, you know, if, if they could take him for the weekend, then that's what they got. So okay. once both parties were able to do the weekends, that's what we did. So we're not yanking baby Dennis away from his uh, child care to go to some crazy visit at CPS office or anything, right? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. 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 Good. Okay, uh, Mr. Davis, you, Miss Lang, do you, since y'all represent the interveners that are the ones that have the visitation now, um, do y'all, where's Miss Lang? Oh, good. On my screen, y'all are right together. Do y'all feel that the ad litems have worked on a reasonable, fair schedule? for your client and the other intervener I'm talking about? As, as far as everything has been going so far, Judge, I think that the visits have been fair. And, and, and if they're extended the same way for equal time, I think that that's fair on both sides right now. Um, okay. Are you asking anything about the Parkers or do you want me to? No, I asked about you, Ms. Moore, you're, you answered my question. Thank you, Judge. That's good. Uh, I, I understand. Uh, Ms. Lang, ditto. What's your answer? We, we agree, Judge. We definitely don't want to have anything reduced at all on our side. We're looking forward to expanding, and I think that the ad items and the department have been extremely judicious in how they've gone through and, and made sure everybody's needs are being met and taking care of that little baby and not wearing him out. So, okay. so Mr. Davis and Ms. Lang, if I, because I, I mean, that's the way I feel too, but I, you know, just cause I feel that way doesn't mean y'all do. So what, what I, a, as Ms. McClure said, her, Raphael, Ms. McDougal, they, I, I'm glad to hear that because we know how often, how often do we have y'all at lawyers on a case have the same answer and agree and how often on a case we have the ad items work in something that, everybody's happy with too. I mean, that's pretty rare. So that's, that's good. Um, but if I leave the expanded visitation up to, you know, as long as it's equal for both sides, are y'all okay if I do that? Just because I mean, they know the schedules and y'all, I hate to micromanage that stuff and despise it. I'm not a, you know, a, a county court at law, family law, divorce, Splitting the pots and pans. I just, just don't like to do that. Would y'all be okay with that as long as it's equal for both sides? Judge, as long as it's equal. I mean, we've, it's been very nice as, with the logistics, how accommodating everything has been anyhow. So this has been, so we, we would be happy with that. Okay. I agree, agree, Judge. I mean, Abigail might have a ball game on Friday night and, and, and then able to do transportation, but she might be able to deal with a Tuesday or something. You know, I, I assume that 
that Miss Moore has her basketball schedule and everything that she needs. If she hasn't, you need to give it to Raphael and to the Ed Lydons, Miss Moore. So we, and you know, I, I don't, Miss McClure, do y'all not make any decisions without talking to the Miss Moore and Miss Dyer? We, we start with the placement to make sure that we don't hurt their schedule. And then based on that, we then make a tentative mm -hmm. plan and then we reach out to the various parties. And um, so far, um, we've been able to accommodate everything. Um, I, I'm, Raphael, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've had any issues. Um, you know, we, we tell them what we would like to do, but if they have a real issue, then they let us know and we, we work around it. Okay. Okay. Well, I know we have like a, uh, there's probably a, what's it called? Columbus Day is coming up. It's, uh, I don't think it's a state holiday. I don't think we get the day off, but I mean, most people probably get the day off. So that would be an expanded day in, if that's one of the weekends. Okay. And, and we would work with that. If, if there's already a built-in expansion, then we'll shift days to accommodate. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to add? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Den Mr. Price, you have a service plan. You have to comply or your parental rights could be subject to termination. Um, our next hearing is another permanency hearing on 11-8 of 23. Um, Ms. McClure, if y'all want to start working on um, Thanksgiving uh, and Christmas, because then we have another hearing after that, I think the quicker we can make the plan, the better off everybody is. That's what we're going to talk about and, next week. Okay. And that's just assuming things are going to go well, you know, between now and then. Right. Okay. okay so um, I'm going to say expanded visits as agreed by CPS and Ed Lightums. And if, if, if y'all end up having a problem with something, uh, y'all can always ask for a special hearing or we can do a phone conference or, or you know, something like that. Um, the same stay away, I'm gonna allow uh, uh, Ms. Moore and her family, and she has baby Dennis, to go to the ball games in Grimes County. Ms. Moore, you understand, I don't need to go over the stay away provisions that we previously entered or, regarding Miss Nancy and Mr. Dennis Price are still in effect, right? Okay, so you understand all that, that'll remain. Um, uh, some of, randomly, some of Mr. Price's uh, drug tests that he's gonna do to the department are to include ETG. Um, as to Miss Billy Parker, y'all, if, if um, this is, we're gonna do some expanded visits, if the Adlitums and CPS agree, then baby Dennis can go spend the night at Miss Parker's for a night. I don't have a problem with that. Um, that's just that's going to be by agreement of CPS and Ed items, probably on a home visit, you know, things like that. Uh, um, but but it's going to be out of Miss Dyer's time. It's not going to be in addition to any any other time. I mean, something might happen. The Dyers might have an emergency situation, and what would we do then? So that would be some, you know, something to consider. But anyway, that's based on agreement. Um, San Antonio Ants, here's the deal on that, y'all. I mean, baby Dennis drives a lot. He doesn't drive, but he comes a long way, more long way to go to Miss Abigail's house, but still a long way to come to his visits here. The last that little man is in the car, the ha you know, and he's actually with family is where he needs to be. So if the ants want to come up, the San Antonio folks, I mean, I know they have, they have issues too. I got it. But it's not like he, I mean, he's up here for a weekend. I mean, if they can plan to come up every other month or whatever that you and Lightums are happy with and CPS, I'm okay if they come up and visit him up here. But I don't want that little man to have to go from here to there to there. You know, that's crazy. He might as well be on tour, you know, Texas if he's going to all those places. No. And and I don't remember much about their home, their, their like home environment either. So my daughter, huh? Very nice. It, it was, not, they went way out of their way to make room for the baby. They cleared out a whole room. And well, you could talk to Mr. Tobar about it. I'm not sure if he did the home visit, but. I mean, it's uh, if Miss Jamie wants to go down spend the night I don't know but you know let's try to incorporate Miss Parker more I mean she's grandma before we get to extended stuff like that um child care 
Uh, I'm putting in the order that child care uh, basically is excused if baby did misses it because of court ordered visitation. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, no, I don't, that that's because technically all he's out now is just for he'll be out for a couple of visits and for doctor's appointments, right? Or unless he's sick, mm-hmm. right? Okay, okay. Um, Let's go into a breakout room. Lawyers, Ms. Parker and Casa. Get your calendars. Um, hey, Judge, what time is the next hearing that you want me um, on? We, what day does say? It's 11 8. Uh, and you need to give us the rest of the dates, Judge. This is the first time. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't do that. Okay, sorry. 11 8 is the next permanency hearing. Uh, 110 is the second permanency hearing and Valentine's Day is the trial. But remember, that's a quotation marks, a tentative day. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. What's the new dismissal, Your Honor? New dismissal date is 3 9 Thank you. Judge Mabry. Yes, ma'am. Did you say you wanted uh, my mom to go into a breakout room with the attorneys? Yes, ma'am, because she's an unrepresented party. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to help her do that. Okay. Uh, well, you know, all we're going to talk about is calendars. And um, that's more of a lawyer deal anyway, you know? Oh, is it? I think it's asking her to join. Can you want to Okay. So, I mean, that's all we're going to talk about. So if she can't come, it's okay. 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 Um, I don't think I got, was that on the docket that the price was? Um, no, it would have been. Okay, everybody, um, right now, we're still going to keep those same dates that I previously told y'all, but also put March 4th, 5th, and 6th on your calendar. Uh, those dates are confirmed with all the attorneys as our trial date, our three trial dates if we need um, need need that okay so 11 8 1 10 2 14 march 4 5 and 6 and that's going to be in trial in person uh anybody else have any anybody have any opposition to the other hearings being on zoom if need be okay Okay. anybody else need anything before we recess no ma'am Thank y'all. If y'all can't reach an agreement on this visitation, let me know. We'll set something. Thank y'all. Bye.